I am Jesus, he said, and, uh, and I should say, he didn't say he was Jesus, but he says, I am. And in the book of John, there are seven particular things that he said that he was. And, uh, and I just want us to begin to look at another one here this morning, and, uh, and I'm so thankful that you're here and we're able to share in this time together, and for those joining us online as well, thank you so much for being a part of the message today. And today we're going to look at part two of this series in that we're in called I Am Jesus. And in this part two, as we make our way through these different statements, we're going to look at the last statement in the book that Jesus said when he said that I am the vine or I am the true vine. And we're going to look at the last one that he spoke about. And, um, and wow, is it ever incredible as we began to think of the application of this in our lives today. So let's look at this whole thing called I am the vine that Jesus said that he was. Today, if you have your Bibles, we are looking in John chapter 15, where we read a little bit earlier in the service, uh, 1 to 8, or you can go to 1 to 17. We're going to be drawing on all 17 verses there in John chapter 15. And I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is one of the most important I am statements, one, that Jesus said. And in particular, just to recap verse 5 of that passage, he says, I am the vine. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Sometimes we like to think we can reverse that a little bit, but it doesn't work that way. And uh, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nada. Does it say nada in there? No, I don't think it does. But you can do nothing apart from him. Now, as we begin to look at this passage, some of you, and especially those who maybe who think that, what's the big deal about being called a Christian? I can do all kinds of things without God. But you know what? As we begin to look at this passage, there are all kinds of people in this world look like they've got lots of beautiful foliage on their tree, but their root system is dead. And they may look good, and, and maybe we think, wow, I wish I could be like so-and-so, but do you really? Do you know if their roots run down, down deep? Do you know if they actually have life flowing through them? Or do the, does their foliage just look so good, but really, in essence, they bear no fruit? And so Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And as we look at this statement, I think, and as we jump into it here in John chapter 15, this statement is all by itself is very dramatic. But when you begin to contextualize what's going on here within this passage, you begin to understand just how much more dramatic it really is. Because as you begin to look at this statement that Jesus said here in John 15, and you begin to sandwich that between what happened in John 13, which is an event we call the Last Supper. Why do we call it the Last Supper? Because it was the Last Supper that Jesus had before he was crucified. But in John chapter 13, in that event called the Last Supper, uh, where they gathered with his disciples before he went to be crucified, before he was arrested, and and, and everything that ugly that happened, then when you fast forward and you go up to chapter 18, where we see him actually getting arrested, between 13 and 18, there's a whole lot of conversations that happened. There's a whole lot of things that took place. And so it really is important for us to recognize the fact that between that last supper where he knew he was having his last supper, his his time with his disciples gathered there in the upper room, to the time that he was actually arrested in in the Garden of Gethsemane, between all of that, those conversations are worth paying attention to. Those conversations are very important for us. And one of those things is right in the middle here, John 15 says, I am the vine, the true vine, and my father is the gardener. And so as we look at this passage today, I can't help but tell you that I very dramatically feel, I don't even know, I want to, everything inside me wants to burst out because I think this passage that's in front of us today is really what Spotlight Church needs. We can have all the beautiful things there is that maybe a church has, Even within our city, we can have churches on every corner who have beautiful foliage, but if we don't have a root system that goes down deep into the Word of God, 
and into prayer and what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, folks, we have nothing and we will produce no fruit or results. We will have no influence. And so this passage that we have in front of us today, I think is crucial for Spotlight Church. Not looking at anybody else, not looking at another church, but for us. It's important that we be connected to the vine. And Jesus said, I am that vine. So today as we look at this, I think there are two questions that I want us to look at this morning. If you have your note sheet, um, then that's great. You can follow along. But there are two questions that I want us to look at today that I think are important for us to consider. And I'm going to go quickly through these. First of all, the first question is, is why is being connected to the vine so important? Why is being connected to the vine so important? Then the second question is, is how do we stay connected? To the vine. So I'm glad you asked those questions today. I'm glad you gave me an opportunity to touch on them. So first of all, why is being connected to the vine so important? Why does Jesus, in some of his final conversations that he has, why does he zero in on this particular principle about being connected to the vine? Why is it so important? I think it's because Jesus knows that you and I will never, ever be the disciples that he wants us to be, and he knows that we can be, unless we are connected to him. Do you know how easy it is to live day after day and never open your Bible? You know how easy it is day after day to go through religious things and hang around people and never tell anybody about Jesus? Do you know how easy it is to maybe the only prayer you ever pray is say, Lord, bless this food, you know, pass the lips, pass the gums, look out, stomach, here it comes. You know, do you know how easy it is to go through such a shallowness in our Christian experience today that we really have nothing to show for? We have no fruit. The character maybe isn't there. Maybe the influence on other people's lives aren't there. And so we need to be connected. So let me give you a couple of things here. First of all, the reason it's important to be connected to the vine is that staying connected produces fruit. I'm going to give you very clearly what Scripture says. Two things, two things that are, is the fruit you need to be concerned about in your life. We're going to get to that, all right? Um, but I, I got a whole bunch of other good stuff I want to talk about first before I get to that. But I want to give you what that fruit is, because you and I aren't called to produce apples and oranges. If you are producing apples and oranges, see your doctor right away, all right? But you and I are called to produce fruit. What is that fruit that we need to be producing? And so we need to be connected to the true vine. And remember, that's an expression, that's there in that passage as well. He, not only is Jesus the vine, he is the true vine. Because when we do, we will bear much fruit. Robert uh, Foster, an author, said this, and I love his quote when he said, The man who concentrates on the root system of his life is going to bear fruit upward. But if he concentrates on the appealing foliage, he may end up a rootless failure. I thought that was pretty good. So it's more than about just looking beautiful on the outside. And there are so many lives today that look beautiful on the outside, but man, oh man, I think probably from the King James and another passage actually says it best when it said, uh, he stinketh, uh, because sometimes we can look at people and say, wow, they've got it all together, but in essence, they don't. They're that rootless failure. So here in John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And what he was trying to say to you is that, he was trying to tell you that if you're not careful, there are some false vines that you can build your life and be connected to that will leave you broken and empty and shallow. And that's why our world today oftentimes chases after those false vines. They're that beautiful foliage on the outside, but the root system is empty. There's nothing. So what are the false vines? Our world is obsessed with money and possessions. Our world is obsessed with things related to sex. 
Our world is obsessed with status and social uh, abilities. Our world is obsessed with uh, appearances and having the right clothes. Do you know, if you really want to be that person today that is so popular, and by the, world, by the way, our world is obsessed with popularity, you know, you got to have that right tag on your clothes, you know. you got to pull it out and say, well, look what I have. I, I've, and, and it's amazing. People like to say, do you know what I found at Winners? You wouldn't believe. I saw the tag, and I just, oh, my lad, I had to have it. But I got it at Winners, so I didn't pay full price. All right. Our world is obsessed with all kinds of what I would call our false vines. Jesus said, I'm the true vine. If you really want to be, by the way, if you really want popularity and you want to have the, 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 the things that God wants you to have, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, you may not have all the money you want. I'm not promising you, you a million dollars this morning, so don't go out of here and think, Oh boy, the pastor has promised a million bucks. I'm not promising that at all. But I'm promising that you will have a life that is worth living. You will have something that's worth getting up in the morning and say, isn't it great to be alive? Jesus is the true vine. And sometimes we hook ourselves to things that really will leave us empty. Sometimes even the most precious things we have in this world are really not the true vines. There's only one who is the true vine that will give you everything you need through the good times and the bad, and that's Jesus. We need to remind ourselves that that's what Jesus was trying to point out to his disciples. If they weren't careful, they would attach themselves all kinds of things that would really just leave them broken and empty. And our world today wants to have the appearance that we are a perfect a home or a perfect life, but inside our, our house is in shambles. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to think about your root system in your life. How deep does it run? Jesus says staying connected will produce fruit. Now here are the two kinds of fruit that Scripture talks about that you are called to produce in your life. First of all, the fruit of character. Character. Character is what you are when no one's looking, right? Character is what you are when you, you're on your computer and you're tempted to look at pornography, but you don't because you're a godly character. You don't do that. Character is what you are when no one else is around, and we're called to produce fruit within our character, and we're going to talk about that. Matter of fact, I will talk about that. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23 tells us exactly what that fruit is. Matter of fact, the scripture says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Man, oh man, if you want to know what love is, connect to the vine. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. There it is. There it is. That's the kind of fruit that will come out of your life. If you connect to Jesus, if you follow Jesus, man, oh man, watch out. I mean, these are really bad things. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness. Obviously, I'm joking, but you know what? These are great things to have coming out of your life. And they will come out of your life with such depth and such influence and such impact, but only if you're connected to the vine. So one of the fruits that we're called to produce in our life is character. Folks, we need that today. We need to be people of our word. We need to be people who know what it is to have joy, even in the darkest moments. To have peace that passes all understanding. To have patience when the world is in chaos. To be kind to those who aren't very kind to us at all. As a matter of fact, I can give you a list of names of uh, people <laughs> that, that could use a little bit of your kindness, all right? But you know what? If we're going to be that kind of beacon here within our community and not just be shallow and not just go through our church things, it will happen when we're connected to the vine, to Jesus, to walk in his steps. The second thing that we're called to produce in our life for fruit is conversions. Do you know that you're called 
to share and to witness and to tell other people about Jesus Christ? Do you know that when you begin to do that, the Holy Spirit will use you? And someone might even say, you know what? I want to know that Jesus. Isn't that shocker? They might be looking for hope. They might be looking for peace. But how will they know if no one tells them? Conversions. Conversion is helping people to stop living in the darkness and discover the light, and discover life and hope. So there you go. Those are the two fruits. The fruit of your character and the fruit of being able to impact and see someone else find their way to eternal life. That's why being connected to the vine is so important, so that you'll produce fruit. The second thing you need to discover about this is that being disconnected produces nothing. Being disconnected produces nothing. Jesus said that right there. He says in in verse 5, apart from me, you can do nothing. We can have all the, the rocking worship teams there is. We can have the bands rolling. I could have all kinds of strobe lights. I could have smoke rolling up here if you like. But all that foliage will produce nothing if it's not really at the heart of it being connected to the vine. Nothing wrong with those things, but it's more than that. Jesus says, apart from me, You can do nothing. Apart from me, your character won't change. Apart from me, you'll never influence your neighbor to maybe think about coming to Jesus. This is why here at Spotlight Church, this 24 hours of prayer is so crucial to us. It's not a gimmick. It's about being connected to the vine. It's about saying, Lord... We can't do it without you. 24 hours, asking people to pray through every hour. Because we can't do it without them. We'll produce nothing. And so this 24 hours of prayer is huge to us. Matter of fact, if you notice verse 7 within that passage, I think it even shows us how it's linked to, linked to prayer. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. Notice here's where the power of prayer comes. You may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. See, that only happens when you are connected to the vine, to Jesus. Unfortunately today, and I don't mean to be negative, but so many individuals and churches are producing very little. You would think with all the churches in our world today and in our country today, that we would be so much more effective. Why are we not? I only have one answer. Are we really connected to the vine? Francis Chan, in a kind of a humorous way, addresses the same question, and and he illustrates it when he pretends that he's a parent who's asked their kid to go clean the room. Now, I can tell you as a parent raising three, three kids, you know, asking them to clean the room, two boys, one girl, all of them equally just as challenging. To ask them to go clean the room, it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of a challenge to do that. But Francis Chan says sometimes that asking believers to produce the fruit they need to produce is kind of like asking a kid to go and clean the room. And so you say, hey, I, I want you to go and clean your room, or did you clean your room? And the kid comes back and says, well, I memorized what you said about cleaning the room. That's nah, not going to cut it, all right? Or, or you say to them, well, that's great, but did you actually clean your room? And, uh, and your child says, you know, um, I got it tattooed right here on my arm. I've got it in Hebrew um, that you told me to go and to clean my room so I could be reminded. And everyone would know when they see my tat that, that I'm going to get my room clean. No, did you actually clean your room? And, and, and they answer again, I've got four friends together, we got four friends together, we went to a coffee shop, Dad, and we talked about what it meant to clean the room, and we studied the word clean in Greek, and it's klinio, which means to like clean in haste and clean with much fortitude. Did you clean your room? 
Oh, we went to a conference, and we talked about what it means to clean your room. Then someone told us how to clean more effectively. Yeah. But did you clean your room? So Francis Chan in his illustration was trying to get the point across so that sometimes as churches, that's what we do. We talk about all these things, but we never do it. And you can only do it when you're really connected to the true vine. Folks, this morning, God loves you so much. He wants to do so much more in and through your lives if you give him the chance. He wants to stimulate growth and fruitfulness in your life if you give him the chance. Finally, this morning, the second question that we want to answer is not only is why being connected to the vine is so important, but secondly, how do we stay connected to the vine in this messed up world? How do you live for Jesus when so many people say, nah, I could care less? Matter of fact, even a lot of people go to church. If you ask them to verbalize what they actually feel, sometimes they'll say, yeah, I'm interested, but mm, not sure. How do we stay connected to the vine when we have a heart that desires to do so? The only thing I could think when I was trying to answer this question for myself is there are two things that you and I need to do, and I close with this. Number one, you need to do what Jesus says. Notice here within this passage in John chapter 15 that Jesus uses the pattern of his own obedience to the Father to show us the pattern that you and I need to live. You and I need to pattern a life of obedience. We need to do what the Bible says. There it is. Your life will not produce fruit if you're not staying connected to Jesus. And obedience to the word of God is something that is absolutely essential. It's not optional. Sometimes the word of God is treated like a salad bar. And I realize you folks during the pandemic haven't been to a salad bar in a while. All right. But people wander and go, ooh, I like that. I like that. Ooh, I don't like that. No, and, you know, no. and, and sometimes people look at the word of God that way. But you know what? The full counsel, all of the word of God, we need to obey. So we need to do what Jesus says. Matter of fact, in John 15, verse 10, it says, If you keep my commands, you, what? you will remain in my love. And so this morning, I want to encourage us, young and old and everybody in between, do what Jesus says. Walk in his steps. Be obedient to him. 1 John 2, 4, and I don't have it in my notes, but if I remember correctly, it says, He that saith, I remember it in the King James, all right, He that saith, I, I, I know him, but keepeth not his commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That verse has impacted my life. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be false. I want to be real with people. So I want to do what Jesus says. And so how do we stay connected to the vine? You do what Jesus says. And lastly, you love like Jesus loves. <laughs> and that's not easy. Jesus says, you know, love your enemies. You know how hard that is. Of course you do. You've, <laughs> you've got enemies too. You know how hard it is. It's, why didn't he say, slap your enemies? I could really obey that one really well. But he doesn't. He says, love. Love like Jesus loves. Jesus' love was real and powerful, and it, and it changed everyone from the blind man to the, the woman who was suffering from um, the loss of blood and, and needed healing to everybody, even right down to the, to the thief on the cross, whom Jesus said, today I will remember you. His love changed everybody. We need to love like Jesus loves. And my command is this, he said in verse 12, is love each other as I have loved you. So this morning, as we look at these conversations that happened here between John 13 and John 18, Jesus was trying to get across some very important truth. And I think for us as a church today, we need to listen. So my question for you this morning is how is your root system? If someone was to look at your life, they may see someone who has all the foliage and 
All the external things look fine, but if they were to dig deeper, what would they find? Would they find someone that is doing things that is against God's word, but yet maybe they think no one knows about it? Would they find someone that is authentic and real, or will they find someone going through the motions? When I was preparing this message, I realized, even in my own life, that in many ways there were some false vines I began to get connected to. False vines that I thought would bring me satisfaction. They don't bring satisfaction. Matter of fact, they even leave you more empty. And I figure if I'm feeling that way about some things, maybe some others as well. Not pointing the finger. You notice I went across the ceiling. All right. Maybe God is speaking to us as a church. I can't speak for any other church. But for us here at Spotlight, we want to be connected to the vine. I don't want to be fake or phony or going through the things to be real. What about you this morning? Let's stand together in closing. And let's close out this message by dealing with that question. If God is speaking to you this morning about your root system, and about how deep you go when it comes to being connected to Jesus, or is it just a lot of foliage on the outside? Is there something real down below? Are you connected to Jesus the way he wants you to? If God is speaking to you today, I would like you to do something about it. This front row here is empty. If you feel God is speaking to you today, I want you to step out from where you are, walk right down here. You can either sit on the front row or kneel at the chair, and let's do business with God. Is God speaking to you today about something in your life? Let's bring it before him, and let's give him an opportunity to transform us and change us by being connected to the vine.